If you're a parent of a newborn, this is probably all too familiar. Your newborn starts crying and you jump into solution mode. Your mind jumps to the usual suspects. Are they hungry, tired, or do they need a diaper change? But they won't eat and you can't soothe them to sleep and their diaper is clean. This is where things get tricky. It's where most parents feel at a loss and start to really stress as they try to find the cause of their little one's distress with no luck. So let's talk about three lesser known but still common reasons why newborns cry and how to identify and address each of them. If your little one has a full tummy and isn't tired yet, but they've suddenly started fussing and crying seemingly out of nowhere, they might just be bored. Yes, even babies experience boredom. And when they do, they tell us using the only form of communication they have by crying. The solution could be as simple as changing their environment by walking to another room, giving them a different toy or some you time. And what's great is that you can actually identify early signals of boredom before the crying even starts. That means you can hopefully avoid it altogether. There are several ways your newborn will signal their boredom and need for a change in activity. At first, these indicators are subtle. It might be a disinterested turn away, a bit of restless squirming, or perhaps a slight increase in vocalization. If you fail to notice these early boredom signs, your baby may escalate to more overt signs. They might start arching their back, kicking or squirming more intensely, crying, or even coughing. When you observe any of these signs, a simple change in their activity can often alleviate their distress and put a stop to their tears. Besides boredom, there's another common cause of your newborn's tears that's totally normal and actually expected. It's a pattern of crying that almost all newborns experience. This pattern is often called the period of purple crying and it starts at around two weeks of age. Initially, your little one might just seem fussier or cry more than usual without any clear reason. This fussiness builds up gradually over the next few weeks, hitting a peak when your baby is between six to eight weeks old. At its peak, newborns will spend around three hours per day fussing and crying without any apparent reason. However, don't be alarmed if your little one cries a bit longer as it varies from baby to baby. Most of this crying and fussing tends to happen in the late afternoons or evenings, but it can change day by day. But here's the good news. After this peak, the amount and intensity of crying and fussing slowly starts to decrease. By the time they hit four months old, your baby's crying and fussing episodes will reduce significantly and spread out more evenly throughout the day. At this stage, it also gets a little easier to understand why your baby is crying. So remember, this predictable pattern of crying, although challenging at times and a little frustrating, is completely normal and a part of your baby's development. With that said, there's an important distinction that needs to be made here. It's not uncommon for parents to attribute their newborn's crying exclusively to this period of purple crying, overlooking the fact that their baby might actually be trying to communicate that they are in pain. Being able to recognize the difference between these two causes of your baby's crying is key to ensuring their well-being. So let's step back and take a closer look at these two scenarios. When it comes to the period of purple crying, the crying spells typically follow a certain rhythm, tending to occur at specific times, usually in the late afternoons or evenings. And during this phase, your baby might unexpectedly turn fussy or burst into tears, seemingly without a clear reason. And just as suddenly as it came, this fussiness and crying tends to suddenly stop. In contrast, if your baby is experiencing pain, perhaps due to an infection, irritation, or an intolerance, their crying would reflect an entirely different pattern. In these instances, your baby might exhibit crying, fussing, or squirming throughout the day without any obvious pattern. This unceasing crying and fussing can give the impression that your baby is never truly settled. So although crying is a normal part of your newborn's development, excessive crying or changes in their typical behavior warrants attention and a checkup with a healthcare professional. They can provide you with the expert advice and if necessary, interventions that can ensure your baby's optimal well-being and comfort. Another aspect that parents often worry about is their child's development, especially if their little one is meeting milestones on time. To help you navigate this potentially stressful aspect, I've prepared a free guide that outlines the developmental milestones your child should reach during their first year of life and when you might need to be concerned. To get your copy, simply click the link in the description below this video. 
Now, of course, at times your newborn will communicate more common needs like tiredness, hunger, and discomfort. So let's talk about how to identify those needs. If your baby is feeling hungry, they'll likely show you certain signs known as hunger cues. These can include moving their hands towards their mouth as if trying to find something to eat, turning their head in the direction of your breast or a bottle, often referred to as rooting, smacking or licking their lips, indicating a desire for food, or opening their mouth wide as if ready to latch on for feeding. If you're seeing these signs and it's been two to four hours since their last feed, it's a good bet that your baby's cries may be related to hunger. On the other hand, if your baby is crying and they've recently eaten, then they may be trying to communicate to you that they're tired. If your baby is tired, they will show you tired cues. Early tired cues include glazed or unfocused eyes, blank stares or staring into the distance, a lack of interest in people or toys, reduced body movements, and long and slow blinking. If you miss these early tired cues, your baby will move on to more obvious late tired cues, like jerky body movements, yawning, frowning, grizzling or crying, rubbing their eyes and ears, or sucking their fingers. Seeing these signs, especially if your baby's been awake for 40 minutes or more, suggest that they may be ready for sleep. If your well-rested and recently fed baby continues to cry during playtime, they might be uncomfortable. In such cases, you might want to check their diaper first, as a wet or dirty diaper can cause discomfort. If the diaper is clean and dry, then your baby's discomfort might be due to another reason. Temperature can often be the culprit, so make sure your baby isn't too hot or too cold. A simple yet effective way to check your little one's temperature is to gently put your hand inside their clothes and touch their chest or their back. Their skin should feel warm and dry. If it's damp, sweaty, or hot, your baby might be too warm. Conversely, if their skin feels cool or cold, they might need more layers. While it's crucial to know why your newborn is crying, there will be instances where the crying just doesn't stop. In these scenarios, certain soothing strategies can be lifesavers, which is exactly what I cover in this video. In this video, you will see four easy to follow yet highly effective holding techniques that you can use to comfort your crying baby. You'll be amazed by how well these holding positions calm your little one, particularly when it feels like nothing else is working. So make sure you check it out.